Ooh, did she go down? Good one, Jake. Good one. A good one, bro. Nice. Get the net? Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's going. She's a, going like a good one. Nice one. Not giant, but nice. For our first fish, she's a good one to start. All right. No, I like you lift it up where I don't have to bend down for it. That's a good thing. <clears throat> first fish of the day. And it's a nice crappie. Holy mackerel. You know, crappies in many, many parts of the country are a really, really big deal. People love their crappie fishing. And uh, there's been a crappie explosion up in Canada, too. It's really been amazing to me to see in the last 25 years what has happened up there. Environmentally, things have changed that crappies are liking. Yeah, you know, it's really an incredible thing. And crappie fishing, like I said, is changing like everything else. There's soft baits in every shape, size, and colors. There's hard baits. The hard bait phenomena is really getting popular. L little small finesse baits for crappies, particularly biggie, bigger fish. This crappie finesse bite, isn't, it isn't no longer a bobber and a minnow for sure. It's artificials and you don't need bait ever. More on that later. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves. Adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Nowadays, manufacturers are making products specifically designed for panfish. From rods, from reels, from line, to even nets and hard baits and soft plastics. There he is. He came back. Ooh, this is a good one, Jake. Nice. I can, I can feel I can feel her. It's a netter, but look at that. When they run like that, they're good ones. Yeah. It's, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be, but all right. Right now, I'm, I'm fishing with a float, but we got rods rigged a variety of different kinds of, of ways, you know, with different baits. Uh, I'm fishing right now on this bad bait. This is called the Big Bite, Big Bite Baits. Linder's Panfish Jigs. I love it. And we've been catching lots and lots of crappies on this baby. You know, I'm fishing with Jake Wallace. You might say, Jake Wallace, who is Jake Wallace? Well, we work together for a number of years now. Jake co-hosts one of the shows we produce called Angling Buzz and Angling Buzz Ice. And he does some of the shows with us on Angling Edge, but his main responsibility is he's our social media guru. <laughs> That's his main job. And he's a really good fisherman. He loves to fish for all kinds of fish, 12 months out of the year. Anything that swims, Jake's into it. You know, we got the perfect weather day for crappies. We got some overcast, a slight breeze. And when you got weather like this, those fish, oh, there was one, just missed them. Those fish come out of the cabbage and they want to feed. So we've got everything lined up. It should be a great day for crushing crappies. This segment is brought to you by Sunset Country, Ontario, Canada. You gotta come visit. I'm seeing some good deep cabbage all the way out here. I'm marking a few fish a little further out than I seen yesterday. See that stem, Dan? That's some crappies. Yeah, that's the crappie that you'll see when I move in on. They're right above those weed, weed weeds. They're right in between those weeds. Look at that, that, that's one out there. Look at him moving. He's swimming right back in. You know, year to year on every body of water, the water clarity changes and this lake's no different. This is the clearest, there's one. Ooh, this is the clearest we've ever seen it, right? And so one real important tool we've been using is our wavy label glasses. I'm able to follow that weed line, see it down there with these glasses. And it's uh, definitely helping you, you know, find where the fish are. You know, you're able to cast those pockets of cabbage and you're able to catch big crappies like this one. Look at that beauty. Because the weeds aren't everywhere, right? We're just cruising through, intermittently moving through these weed beds. And we're seeing these little pockets of cabbage casting at them and the crappies are definitely sitting in them. 
Oh, great big one. Got a lot of spunk too. Look at the shoulders on that fish. All right, as you can see, we're just on a weed line break right now, and I've got my shallow water highlight set at 10 feet. But if I go ahead and adjust that to five feet, it will reveal why these crappies are sitting in this particular spot. There you go, as you can see. So we got an underwater point on this weed line, and that's what these crappies are relating to. So if you adjust that shallow water highlight feature on your hummingbird, it'll show you different things and you can find the spot on the spot. Better. Not sure. Don't feel like a big one. It's like a crappie. That's a crap. Nothing much. I can flip this one, Jake. You know, it's interesting, They've, we've got rods rigged with horizontal moving baits and uh, vertical baits under floats. They don't seem to be chasing right now. You know, that could change, we get a little more wind. It, you know, we just got out here, so we're just kind of sampling how aggressive are these fish. You know, what's the mood? That, you're always trying to pulse the mood of the fish. What is the mood of the bite? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know. They're a little bit a yeah. little bit active. You could fish a little bit faster. You, you go with those horizontal baits. They slow down like they seem to be right now at this stage. You know, you you, you got to leave it in front of them for a little while. You know what? Stay vertical, and you know how those crappies will just swim up. When they get active, they can get pretty active, though surprisingly. You know what it is? It's a big gill. Ooh, yeah. Real nice gill. Oh, wow. Wow, that's that's some awesome bycatch, my goodness. We are loaded for bear, we got You know, bites. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drag. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. Yeah, oh wow, beauty, absolute beauty. Oh, huh. look at that gill. Big, beautiful bull on the Linder Panfish Special. I just spot locked on that. I wouldn't mind catching a couple of gills like that for bonus, bonus panfish. Gills are a panfish, perch are a panfish, rock bass are a panfish, crappies are a panfish. And uh, St. Croix comes out with some really neat uh, panfish rods. You know, really, really good rods for panfishing. The rod I'm using is a new Ab Abbott series rod, panfish series. And it's a 7.3 medium light power, extra fast action. And it's a dream for this kind of fishing. Now, we've got a couple of different rods in the boat, like Al mentioned, but on all our rods, we've got 1,000 size reels paired up with them. This one happens to be a Dio Legalis 1000 LT. And this reel is super slick because it's got a smooth drag. You know, when you're out here fishing these weed beds for panfish, you're no, undoubtedly gonna run into pike and bass. So it's nice to have that smooth drag. You're not gonna break anything off. And we've got it spooled up with Suffix Nano Braid in the six pound test. And that Nano Braid's super nice because you can cast these light baits a mile. You need a scoop? I gotta keep, oh, big crap, big oh, crap. Oh yeah, nice one, Al. Big crap, big crap. All right, good one, good one, good there one. You go. Nice fish, Al. That, that's get, it's getting up there. I like when you gotta net them. When you're netting crappies like this, you're on a pretty darn good bite. Uh, we haven't got into any real monsters yet, but we're gonna before the day is over. These are pretty darn nice fish. You know, by anybody's standards, anywhere you fish crappies, here or in Canada. Yeah, mo right. most, pe most people catch and har harvest crappies spring of the year when the fish are shallow. Yeah, yeah, you know, the cover isn't like in lakes we fish, the weeds aren't real heavy yet. You, you know, so they can't, ooh, that's another good one. That's a big crop. That's a big crop, Jake.
you know, a lot of the lakes in Minnesota and other parts of the country, they, they are starting to make harvest regulations so uh, uh, we don't really hurt these populations of fish. We've got lakes now that are designated. A nice double. You got, you got the net by you. I I'm do. I can off. get them here for me. I can get that. Oh, this is a good one. He's got a big one. I got to see this. Man, you weren't kidding. There are big crappies in here. What a beauty. Oh, and he came unbuttoned. I like that. That fish that Jake just released there, that's a real big crappie no matter where you fish in the country. And uh, our home state of Minnesota started to implement some years back uh, harvest restrictions. So you can't, we used to be at 20, we, I remember way back 25 fish for years were, were common and they cut back, cut back, cut back. And now to protect bigger fish like that, we've got a lot of lakes that you can only take five fish. That's the limit. And we're seeing more quality fish than we've ever seen before on our crappie fishery and our bluegill fishery. So the management is changing a little, little bit. That's plenty of pounds of fish to catch. You, you fillet five nice, decent sized crappies, you got a good meal, you got a good meal. And you're also in, increasing the odds of having be better bites in the future of quality fish. I'm a big fan of some of these regulations, that's for sure. Now over the past few years of hosting Angling Buzz, I've been able to talk to anglers from all over the country. And one thing I've noticed is the mindset has changed for panfish anglers. You know, back in the day, everyone was about limits, keeping, you know, you wanted to fill a bucket, fill the cooler. Now anglers are practicing selective harvest and it's making a difference on our bodies of water. Yeah, it's, it's, it's grown it up. I don't, there know, we I don't go. think it's a rocko. And if it's a crop, it's a good one. I hope, I hope, ah. It, it's a bluegill. Oh, one of them nice gills. Oh, really nice gills. Uh, look at that. I, it, it was living in the cabbage. I'm so glad that you ain't the only one that caught one. I got one of them big gills too, and I love it. Oh, uh, oh boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is a pretty good spot one. That's one of the, the neat things about throwing these micro baits. This is the newest uh, Countdown Elite series they introduced for panfish. And their bluegills bite them. That, look, look at that bait. It's a honey of a bait. And their bluegills bite them, crappies bite them, perch bite them. Now there's a number of different ways to catch panfish from soft plastics to live bait. But one of the best presentations that really has come on in the most recent years is hard baits. From small crankbaits to lipless crankbaits, two of our favorite here on the edge are the number four X-Wrap and the new Countdown Elite from Rafla. Both these baits give off a ton of flash, dive down deep enough to get in the strike zone and just trigger big crappies and big bluegills into biting. See this drawer? This is where I got all the sweet spots. All the sweet stuff is in here. Uh -huh, another nice gill. You're kidding me. Yeah, I swear on the, uh, the Countdown Ooh. Elite. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. Incredible 11 year warranty. So that was on a number eight shad wrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. Look at that beauty. Look at it, you ate that front treble. I mean, it's, you want to talk about a killer panfish bait. The smallest countdown elite. I mean, it is, it's putting nice fish in the boat today. It's an awesome bluegill. All right, we'll get them back. There you go, buddy. Another gill, another donkey gill. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I love this. I love it, I love it, I love it. He's holding, it's all I can take in my hand. I'm not gonna cast them in it, I'm gonna rest. In fact, I might try a different rod for a second and maybe have a bite of a sandwich. 
Now one little tip we've been doing when we're using hard baits like this is we take our bubble pliers and we actually bend down the barbs and we've noticed that that's made a big difference when unhooking fish and you don't really lose any. So go ahead and bend those barbs and give it a good go. You need the scoop? <laughs> the handy clam yeah, I net. I just take them in and flip them in, bub. There we go. Bring them right to you. I like this, this service. I like sitting in front, make, making a cast, watching the cork, Jake coming up, netting my fish. One of my favorite things to do is to have him net my fish and get the hook out of the net. <laughs> oh, look, you can barely, barely hold them beasts. Huh? Okay, you wanna go back down there, mama? Just a light running 14 incher and then some. There she goes. Man, that was a great fish, Al. Now what we've been using today is Clam's Panfish Series Net. Now this thing was perfectly designed for panfish. It's light, it's got an extended handle, it's got a tape measure on it, it's got this conservation netting, it's the, and it's the perfect size for big crappies, big bluegills, you name it. This is the net for those serious panfish anglers. And a side note, if you get an occasional bass, which ha happens, or a pike in our part of the world, it's big enough to handle a fair-sized fish. You don't bite you off. Now, when people talk about boat control, they're talking about bass fishing, or walleye fishing, or muskie, but it's equally as important for panfish. While many pan fishing situations are relatively sedentary, boat control still plays a very important role when it comes to catching crappies throughout the season. Starting in the spring, when crappies can be found cruising the shallows during the spawn, the Minn Kota Talon is almost mandatory. It gives you the ability to stop on a dime and not disrupt any of the bottom like you would with a large heavy anchor. Right now we are fishing for post-spawn crappies along the weed line, and Al is using spot lock to keep us pinned on the weed edge. Spot lock is critical for midsummer crappie fishing because they are typically in a depth of water that is a little too deep for a talon. As we transition into fall, many of these same crappies can be found in depths between 20 and 35 feet of water. They can be found spread out slowly cruising along the edge of deep basins. This is when the spot lock jog feature on your Minn Kota is invaluable. The jog feature allows you to move your spot lock location five feet in any direction with just the click of a button. We simply find where a majority of the crappies are at and spot lock on top of them. As the school of crappies slowly moves, we use the jog feature to reposition back on top of the school. This is very useful when targeting crappies with jigging wraps and other deep water presentations. The bottom line is good boat control goes a long ways when you are pan fishing. He gobbled that. Those hooks are so, so incredibly sharp. You know, we all know that color makes a difference in all kinds of fishing situations for all kinds of fish, but it seems like crappies in particular can be really color selective at times. I mean, incredibly selective. And uh, this new bait, the Elite, the Countdown Elite came out with a good variety of colors that'll work in almost any situation, anywhere. Yeah, you know, they got a little bit active now. We're working a little bit. We had three rods, like I said, we're swimming a jig, we're throwing somebody's hard baits, we're fishing fish under a float, and like spring of the year anywhere, we're catching good, good fishing in shallow water. You find the new weeds, the weeds have been pretty sporadic. The fish have just been coming off the spawn. You know, they're starting to get out here. In another week, the bite's gonna be absolutely incredible. You know, if you're a pan fisherman, like the multi-millions of us all over the country, and particularly enjoy crappies and bluegills, finesse fishing with hard baits, the varieties of different kind of plastics, the jig heads to fish vertical, to fish horizontal, all these baits have a time and place and are really fun to fish when you fish them on the right equipment. Light line, ultra light rods, the right stuff to deliver. It makes the fishing experience for panfish a whole lot better. I promise you, give it a try. You're going to love it. See you on the water. You know, in the 40 something years that I've been actively seeking the Lord, studying his word and having a better understanding 
of what life is all about. One of my favorite TV evangelists in that period of time was a man named Charles Stanley. He went home to be with the Lord just a short, short time ago. I think he was in his low 90s. His stuff really ministered to my heart. I had a whole bunch of his uh, uh, monthly newsletters and messages here that I was gonna share with you. And I, I do this for about a year in advance. I thought, well, this one would be a good one. This one would be a good one. Well, I picked up the best one this morning before I'm doing this closing. Talk about perfect timing. The title is Two Types of Listeners. It's possible to listen to every word of a sermon while actually not hearing a word of it. Sadly, this happens in churches every week. Bodies may in the, be in the pew, but minds are somewhere else. In fact, practically every church around the world has two types of listeners, passive and active. Passive listeners are those who attend church, maybe even every week, but just sit in the pew and let their minds wander. They watch people, notice how others dress and act, socialize with friends, and make lunch plans. They don't go to church to hear from the Lord, but show up out of habit, or because the simple act of going makes them feel better about themselves. Active listeners, on the other hand, walk into the sanctuary excited about what the Lord is going to say. They have a Bible, a notebook, a pen in hand, ready to capture the meat of the message. They jot down as much as possible, trying not to miss a single point of the sermon, and they listen. They ask themselves, how does this apply to my life? God communicates in many different ways, and when he speaks, we should do our best to listen actively. Of course, we all have days when we're less focused. So if your mind, if so if, your mind is wandering during worship. Ask the Lord to refocus your thoughts and help you tune in to what he was saying. By the way, this was a perfect word for me this morning. I was going to use all of these, but this one, that was God's timing. See you on the water.